Welcome aboard Chronosphere Fiction. Here's just a little quick jaunt for you from writer Mark Slade. It's called The Ghost in You. Here we go. I didn't think you'd come. Oh, darling. How could I stay away? I don't know what I'd do without you. I do. Why you'd wither away? Keith still doesn't know about us. Does it really matter by now? Well, of course it does. Keith is not going to let me go. Oh, God, please. You know damn well you are the one keeping him here. Fran, please, darling. Let's not fight. We only have a short time together each day. I, I, I know. I know. But you do realise you have to be the one to rid yourself of Keith. I know. Believe it or not, he has a sweet side to him. <laughs> oh, darling, please. Keith Ballbreaker Barrett has a sweet side to him. Tell me, when does he show it, gayer love? Hmm? After he's burned a cigarette on the arm of a hooker who hasn't given him his share? How about when old man Jessup hasn't paid Keith for protection on the bread shop? Hmm? How about when he's thrown a brick through the window of Helen Kaufman's salon? All right, Fran. Enough. Gail, if... If I were to help you get rid of Keith, would you do it? For real? I, I don't know. Hmm. What... What if it meant losing me? What do you mean? If you choose Keith... Ah... <sighs> I don't think I'd want to be with you anymore. Especially as a side piece. Fran, you are not a side piece. Well, this started as friends. Then it became a one-night stand. After that, I was once a month. Then just on Thursdays. Now you're permanent. Really? <laughs> yes, really. You mean everything to me. Just how permanent am I? when he walks through that door. Oh God, it is almost six. I need to get dressed and you need to dress and leave. I need to get something ready for his dinner. Stop it! Stop, stop, stop! Listen to yourself! All right, all right. Hand me my skirt and bra. Don't you want your knickers? No. <laughs> I'm leaving them for you. You mean... For Keith to find? Oh, give them here, then. I was trying to be playful. Sexy, even. <laughs> God, you're so silly sometimes. Gail! Gail! Where are you, girl? I'm in the kitchen, darling. What in the bloody hell are you doing in here? You know you can't cook. <laughs> Get off, you bastard. You know I can cook. Look at the pouch in your midsection. That ain't no pouch, baby. At midnight, it turns yeah, into... Yeah, yeah, you always say that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Yeah, I know. What you making? Tuna casserole. Tuna what? I ain't eating that. Why don't you make those steaks? <gasps> They're gone! Uh, of course they are. You, you had steak last night. Oh, yeah. I guess I did. I've been feeling funny lately, forgetting things. Today, like, I want to see Cully and Damien. You know, to get my piece of the airport job. They acted like they couldn't see me. I thought I was dreaming. Well, uh, of course you weren't dreaming. How do you know what I was? Well, darling, I was just saying... You were saying? Well, go on, then, if you know me so well. I, I don't know... Now you don't know. Ow, Keith, you're hurting me. You don't know what I've been going through lately. Do doors opening on their own, walls closing in, hearing people say things so loud, it's been so loud my eardrums are about to explode. Please, stop, Keith. Something else I heard them talking about, Cutty and Damien. Yeah, they was planning to get rid of me. Said that friend of yours, Fran, had plans for me. I told you I didn't want her around, and you deliberately disobeyed me. I know that woman went to the cops on me. Uh, Keith, uh, please, 
Fran is not a rat. She would never tell on you. I thought it was a dream. You know, sometimes uh, then I started feeling woozy. Kate, I would never hurt you. <laughs> I swear. For some reason, Gail, baby, I don't believe you. No, please, Keith, not the belt, not the belt! Hi. Hi. I didn't think you'd come. Oh, darling. How could I stay away? Take your sunglasses off. I don't want to. Come now. Take them off. No. Take off your sunglasses, Gail. <gasps> oh, Gail. Oh, Gail. I've had worse from him. He needs to disappear. We tried that already. Gail, you must let him go. Don't start. Please. If you do, I'm just going to leave. I'll never come Shh. back. Oh, all right. All right. It's all right, darling. Please, we're, we're both upset. No one needs threats. I'm not starting. Just please, please, darling, hear me out. You are far better without Keith haunting your every move. I know. You are right. I do need to let go. I do. I am ready. I just can't think of how to do it. I stay up nights, watching him sleep in our bed, and trying to figure out how to rid myself of him. Then I feel guilty. Keith took me from a dull, empty life with a father who thought he could buy my love. Keith at first seemed to fill a void inside of me left when Mum died. A void I've had since I was 13. <laughs> Funny thing is, I don't feel rotten about what he does to other people or the stealing. I do, however, feel like I owe him. You don't owe Keith a damned thing. I suppose you're right. Darling, I'll make you a deal. You help me rid you of Keith again. And if it doesn't work, uh, then I... I shall never speak of it ever again. But how are we going to get rid of him? Oh, I think I know how. All right. All seven candles are now lit. Go on, get undressed. What? Why? Well, that's what the spell says. Where did you get the spell? From that Jinky's website. The same website you got that awful devil's food cake recipe. I didn't know the recipe would be faulty. God. Here, take this onion. For what? Rub it on you. Is that in the fucking spell? Yes. Now do it. Then I will. This is weird, Franny. Indeed it is. But, oh, you look great. Standing naked in the moonlight. <laughs> Come on now. We'd need to focus. Ah, <sighs> well, you're right. We'd better get on with it. God, I hate coming here. We swore we'd never come here. This house is where we killed Keith. The blood is still here, and his body is buried under the floorboards. Let's not talk about the incident, please. Go on, Gail. Call him. Gail! All right, give me a sec. Keith! Keith, darling! What? what? Keith, could you come here, please? For God's sake, woman, what is it now? You know I'm bit. What the bloody hell is she doing here? I told you, I don't want that witch here. Ashes to ashes, dust, dust to dust, dust, may the wind, wind blow you, you wandering ghost, ghost, and clear the world of the living. Turn, turn you to where you belong, and, and may you disappear without, without a trace. Ashes, ashes to ashes, ashes dust, dust to dust, may, may the wind blow you, wandering ghost, and clear the world of the living. living. Turn, turn you to where you belong, belong and, and may you disappear, disappear without a trace. <laughs> you always disobey me. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, may the wind blow you, wandering ghost, and clear the world of the living. Turn you to where you belong, and may you disappear without a trace. I know you're behind this, you wish. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, may the wind blow you, wandering ghost. I'll kill you. <sighs> And, uh, 
near the world of the living. Oh God, I don't know what to do. I turn you to where you belong and may you disappear without a trace. <laughs> I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> ashes to ashes, dust to dust. May the wind blow you, wandering ghost, and clear the world of the living. Turn you to where you belong, and may you disappear without a trace. <laughs> Fran! Fran! <laughs> is it... Is it... Is he... Is he gone? Oh, Franny. I thought I lost you. Did it work? <coughs> Is he gone, Gail? Yes, it worked. Oh, do you really mean it? I feel so relieved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad darling. darling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Slade. Nice little twist there. Zoe Jenkins played Gail. Sarah Late was Fran. Wesley Critchfield was Keith. Editing, sound design, and music is me, Daniel French. In Chronosphere News, I just did a, another remaster and re-edit of Gafgar and the Eternally Unfurnished Episode 1 which I will also add to Volume 1. It's got more sound effects and music, so be sure to check that out. Port Lock 3 should be coming out sometime this week. And we've started recording for Gafgar and the Eternally Unfurnished, Chapter 12, and Chapter 10 of Generation Z, End of the Beginning end of that four-part season finale. Yes, it is the actual Generation Z season finale coming up. Please tell your friends about Chronosphere Fiction and try to have them subscribe, get us some more downloads. Consider contributing a bit on our Patreon site, patreon.com slash chronosphere. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until next time, Keep your cosmos clean.